I'm Jeremy. I'm Harrison. And you've stumbled into the review. We are here. Where are you from? In this episode, we look at the Steven Spielberg classic E.T. the Extraterrestrial, celebrating its 30th anniversary this summer. Wow, 1982? Did he have phones back then? Nice. But 30 years? Why didn't I see this movie before? Well, there are parts that are kind of scary for younger children, so I was never sure it was a good time. Actually, that's a lie. I just didn't think I could keep it together in the final scenes. Why do you have to go? <sighs> ah. The story starts with a group of aliens and their spacecraft collecting plant samples in the woods. Oh, sort of like that episode of Freakazoid. You know, the one where that little green alien gets lost in the forest? Yeah, that's right. Steven Spielberg produced that and Animaniacs. The animators love to make references to his movies and even occasionally putting him in it. I like it. So was the alien in the woods collecting specimens for high-minded scientific experiments? No, just taking a bathroom break. It's a long way to Alpha Centauri. But our alien gets distracted and wanders too far from his spacecraft. A spacecraft that's got to make a quick exit when the guys in the pickups with the flashlights arrive, led by a guy with keys on his belt, but they never say what his name is. You mean keys? Yeah, I mean keys. I mean, I, I just said that. The guy with the keys on his belt. You mean the guy in the woods, right? Yeah, the guy in the woods with the keys on his belt. Yeah, keys. That's what I just said. I. Wait a minute. Are you doing an Abbott and Costello routine? Who's Alfred and Costello? Abbott and Costello. Comedy team in the 1940s and 50s whose routines were based on complicated wordplay, in this case, for instance. The fact that Peter Coyote's character was never actually named in the movie, but only named in the credits as Keys. Is that what you're doing? Maybe. I need a vacation. You know what's nice this time of year? Where? The keys. Stop that! I don't even know what I'm talking about! So the alien escapes the flashlight party. Who then finds shelter in a shed belonging to his soon-to-be new friend Elliot, where they play the most boring game of catch ever. Of course, nobody believes Elliot. So he then lures the alien to his house with, what else? Reese's Pieces. The Mars Company was asked to use M&Ms in the movie, but they refused. And Reese's Pieces sold millions. So basically that makes Mars losers! So he introduces the alien, who he named E.T., to his siblings with, well, mixed results. They really called him E.T.? Yeah, you know, extraterrestrial. Oh, I'd have called him Bob. Bob? He looks like a Bob. Yeah, I can see that. Eventually, Elliot has to go back to school. That's when we figure out that Elliot can feel everything that E.T. feels, which gives him a preview of his college years with the drinking, First of all, the campus protests, back to the river, back to the and chicks, chicks, chicks. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gertie teaches E.T. the joys of cross-dressing. I guess it's cross-dressing. Elliot did say he's a boy. But he's an alien. How would Elliot know if he was a boy or a girl? Well, boys have what is called a penis. I know that, but how would Elliot know that? I mean, he... Oh, never mind. This is also the part where he learns to talk. Can you say E.T.? E.T. <laughs> now that he's learned to talk, he told the kids that he needs to... Oh, no. To be rescued. He talks weird. How did they make his voice sound like that? Well, the sound designer is a guy named Ben Burt, who I met once, by the way. <laughs> nice guy. I think he just dropped a name. Yeah, I told George Clooney I'd never do that again. Anyway, Mr. Burt heard the voice of this woman, Pat Welsh, while he was in a camera shop and thought it was unique, and asked her to audition. She got the part, and then later on, she got the part of Bosch the Bounty Hunter in Return of the Jedi. Bonus. Just relax for a moment. You're free as a carbonite. You mean her voice just sounded that way? Naturally? Well, if you call 50 years of chain smoking natural, then yeah, sure. Ugh. Which just goes to show, smoke two packs of cigarettes a day, and when you turn 66, you too can be a star. I don't think that's such a good idea. Buzzkill. So E.T. has to build this communication device out of an umbrella, a saw blade, and a speaking spell. What's a speaking spell? Oh man, speaking spell was awesome. It would speak out a word in this electronic voice and you have to spell it out on a little keyboard and stuff. It'll make a 
take them like that anymore. I know. What? There's an app for that. We miss you, Steve Jobs. Why would he need a song blank for a communication device? How would I know? Do I look like an alien? Do you really want me to answer that? The saw blade is just there to set up the fact that E.T. can heal with his finger. Who knows, if his friends don't show up, he can always make his way as the faith healer. Hopefully not. Don't give the whole thing away. I agree, but if you are one of the few people who hasn't seen one of the most popular movies of all time, do yourself and the world a favor and make sure you watch the original theatrical edition. What's the difference? Well, for its 20th anniversary, people got kind of sensitive about having guns in a kid's movie. But there are guns in the movie. Not if you watch it in 2002, thanks to technology! Through the wonder of CGI, Mr. Spielberg digitally scrubbed all the guns from his classic film. Where did the guns go? They were turned into walkie-talkies. That's not scary. Or threatening, and it makes a big part of the climax not work. Later on, Spielberg said he regrets making the changes. Where would I find the original movie? Pick up the two-disc collector's edition. The original theatrical is on disc two. Or you can just wait for this fall when it comes out on Blu-ray, and only the 1982 version will be on it. And then there will be peace. Drama queen. Well, I guess we'll end it right there. I'm Jeremy. I'm Harrison. And until next time, we, we don't have a catchphrase! <laughs>